All right, hello and welcome finally to our 10,000 subscriber special, which is um, uh, your anime story. So this uh, is a video that I want to make about you because you as the subscribers are why I get to do this. And it's an amazing thing. And the fact that there's 10,000, now 11,000 of you, because I'm pretty late at, to this, that um, want to hear what I have to say is absolutely insane. And I feel like there should be more appreciation and thanks given to that. So that uh, is why I wanted to make this special about you. Um, so ab about a month back at this point, I put out this questionnaire, which was, you know, what does anime mean to you? Where you could give a little bit of basic info uh, and say how long you've been watching anime uh, and just basically, like the title says, what it means uh, to you. <laughs> And that's really what it became to me. Um, and that was a long ramble. So let's stop talking about me and get into what it means to you. Now, uh, I said in this form specifically, which you can see on screen now, that I would not be taking every response. I have no self-control, so I will be taking every response. I read through all of them, and some are shorter, some are longer, but it just doesn't feel right to leave any of them out because they all tell a unique story and they all have something in some way beautiful and personal in them. And that's something I want to share. So this might be a long video, but I don't care. It might not look good, but I don't care. It's not going to be the best presentation, but I don't care because it's not about the presentation or how it looks or any of that stuff. It's about you and your personal and beautiful story and what this community and all of it can really mean to us, even when it might just seem like a bunch of guys running around with guns or girls waving wands or guys waving wands and girls with guns it's 2021 and it's it's pride hell yeah so i don't care how this video looks i don't care how i look in this video i hate how i look right now i don't like this shirt i was wearing it because i didn't think i'd be recording right now it's 11 at night but I'm feeling it. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling that care and that compassion because I just had such a great talk with, with a, a new person and it felt like the right time to, to f finally make this video. So we're doing it way too late at night and it's going to be way too long and it's going to look terrible. But I hope th uh, that you uh, appreciate that factor of why I don't care and why I'm letting it be presented in that way because it's not about those things. Anyway, another tangent to the side. Let's actually get into your part of the story here, and I'll figure out where I'll be putting myself on the screen here. So what does anime mean to you? The Professor V. Rawl 10,000 subscriber community special. And there's a bunch of stuff in here uh, that we don't specifically have to go over. So there's obviously explanations. So our first submission, uh, I let people use a username or preferred designation, anything like that. So it's not just going to be... Um, you know, like Jordan or, or a first name or something. So our first one is from iSlipper, who did not give us an age, but said they have been watching anime for three years. Their first anime was One Punch Man, and their favorite was Black Lagoon, which I believe is tied with Bebop for the most uh, picked as favorite anime, which obviously, given the channel, is, you know, what we'd expect. But their story is one of the medium lengths here. And they said, anime is an odd concept to me and how it plays a role in how I felt watching it. I had never watched anime before. However, in 2017, a friend suggested I give it a go. I watched a bit of DBZ, but I never got into it. I always found it to be uninteresting and it never really piqued my interest. However, in 2018, I watched One Punch Man and I really enjoyed it. I started to watch others like Attack on Titan, Full Metal Alchemist, Trigun, and my favorite, Black Lagoon. There was something about anime that connected me in a way that many, connected with me in a way that many shows don't. Anime has the ability to bring out a feeling in someone that isn't really what any other TV show does. Anime means a lot to me is that it helped me feel happier and give me the inspiration to push myself to be a better person. And that last line especially is, uh, you know, obviously I'm going to um, add a little bit of, of, of why I think these stories are so important to each one. And that last line especially is something I feel because when I look at those series, when I look at the, the flame that Psychopaths and other series ignited in me to specifically read up on ethical um, philosophy, there is definitely that push of, you know, when a, a piece of media makes you look deep at yourself, often a consequence of that is 
am I a good person? You know, do I compare to these standards that we have called a hero or different things like that? And even if it's not the reason, there's usually an analysis of yourself when you get into deeper media like that. And anime definitely with its uh, potential to exaggerate in an animated format has the power to bring that out with some very distinct uh, details, visuals, audio, different things like that. So I think anime is very special in that way. And for a lot of people, it's the first media where they're able to connect with something deeper like that. And obviously, uh, helping them feel happier is a great thing as well. I know for many people, anime is a bright, happy escapism. Maybe not all the time. It's not that simple. But there's something about watching those hype anime or more, more popular, happier anime that definitely is something positive as well. Um, sometimes you just need to escape. For me, that's a lot of, that's less anime and that's more variety gaming content on YouTube. It doesn't make anyone either less valid. And again, anime has a supreme power to be happy like that because it's animated, it's bright, it's happy. It has qualities that live things like this don't have. So a great story there. Uh, and, and again, one um, that I'm very happy to share here as I will be with all of them. Our next response was from Maximilian, who gave their age as 20 and says they have been watching anime for the past three years. They have not watched much, but have a general list. They said their first anime was Samurai Champloo, which is one I will have to get to at some point and one I probably just mispronounced the name of. And they said their favorite is Cowboy Bebop, they suppose. I know it may be a dull answer, but it hits the right note to me. That is in no way a dull answer. I know it is. I made a video about the history and how important it was. Um, but I wouldn't say in any way it's a dull pick. I mean, it's, I don't know if it's cut off a little bit. I think it is cut off. I, I have a poster up there for it. Um, I don't think it's a dull pick. I think there is something very distinct about that series. And there's something about 90s anime in general where they were able to take a single feeling and personify it to such a great degree. Uh, I think there's something to be found in so many of them uh, that's very relatable. So I wouldn't call Bebop a dull pick, even if it is popular. And on what it means to you, they said, I have a list, a list of movies that pique my interest, a list that I will one day scratch off. This list has much to give. From Sergio Leone to Igmar Bergman, Judy Garland to Anthony Mackie, horror to comedy, there will be blood to the wind rises and so much more. I see many things from so many points of view. Anime, like everything else, shows me something that I have never seen before and explores ideas that never really flourish anywhere else. These ideas and worlds have communities as well, the more to share with. Taking the time to actually breathe and relish this new horizon makes my world that much more diverse. People can share their passions with me the same way I can show them something they have never seen before. Anime is just another bridge, a cog that makes up the clockwork. And this is something I actually very much uh, appreciate about this story from Maximilian here as well, which is that they're not describing just anime because there are many things uh, outside of anime that are deep in the same way that people might just not have as strong of a connection with. And so for them, it's not as deep. Uh, but I do love the inclusion of, of the specifics of uh, saying that it's not that it's not beautiful, but it's utilitarian in a way, that it's a way to share interest to see new things. Because again, like we said, you can explore a lot of things in anime you can't do with traditional film. And I love that appreciation of what is special about it um, and how it can be used to share a feeling or something that no one has seen before. Uh, so that I think is, is definitely one of the uh, very interesting stories that we have here today. And I... I um, appreciate a lot of the um fine specifics and i again i don't feel like utilitarianism is the right word um but that utility to anime is definitely something to appreciate now our next submission here will be from username x snow who gave their age as 20 and said they have been watching anime since 2014 their first was kill a kill and their favorite was assassination classroom so for what does anime mean to you they said I knew about anime from a young age, from about eight years old, but I never watched it. I would see people reading manga, but I would always ignore it because I hated comic books and, silly me, thought they were the same thing. In 2014, I was talking with some friends in high school. They were talking about Bleach, and it piqued my interest of anime. So that night, I turned on my PC, went to an anime site, and started watching the first show that had popped up, Kill la Kill. 
I've become a fan of anime since then. It's become a big part of the quotes and ideolo ideologies, <laughs> ideologies I talk about when I do public speaking. It's helped me meet some amazing people, and I think on a deeper level about what if that character was me. I wonder if it's made me a better person now. Who knows? Only one way to find out. And again, that's something uh, that we saw in our for first story as well, that idea of it's possible it has made me a better person, which uh, I don't need to go on completely again, but again, something uh, I love to see in this story here. I also love specifically of just go to an anime site, first thing that popped up, kill a kill. Uh, there's something about that that feels like it could have gone so wrong. Like, you could have got a series that was just so out... I guess Kill a Kill is outrageous and over the top and pretty much a parody of anime. So, um, starting on that one is... is I don't know if it's a good or a bad place to start. I guess if you can handle that one, you can handle almost anything. Uh, but there's something about that that's so specific and not funny, but just relatable. Of like, open the anime site, Kill a Kill. Um, you probably saw me smile when I read that. It's, I really love that detail. Uh... And, and that's another thing too is um, part of the big part of the quotes and ideologies I talk about when I do public speaking. I actually really love that um, anime is influencing someone's public speaking. And it's very cool that someone watching the videos is doing public speaking. That's um, something that's terrifying to a lot of people and something I really respect there because mine's completely non public. Um, I, you know, I'm not doing it live in any way. At least not yet. But that's for another day. Um, uh, but I love seeing that as well, too, again, that idea of it has introduced me to these deeper concepts and then taking that to uh, the level I was speaking of, of now I'm going to introduce other people to those concepts as well. Um, but meeting amazing people, uh, bringing it to the public, uh, sharing these ideas with people, even if they don't know they're from anime, but that's how you found them and how you uh, gained an appreciation for something new is is one of the best things about it for sure. And I love that ambiguity at the end of who knows. Uh, that's one of the things I feel like um, when someone questions if they are a good person in that kind of way, generally the feel I get from it is um, more often than not, if you have the capacity to question if you're a good person, you tend to be a good person. Um, so I don't know you. I know no details of your life outside of this or any interactions we've had uh, under different names. Um, but from what you write, I, I would... And, and the very small impression it gives me, I would... Um, tend err on the side to say that you are a good person and hopefully anime being a part of that is very interesting um, but let's move on here to our next response this one is from lucas we do have a first name there we go or you know a name which could be used as a first name so lucas who is 18 and said that they have been watching anime since they were very young three or four but only start started watching regularly around 2018 which is probably very relatable for most of us who grew up on pokemon or Yu Gi Oh or digimon if you're a really cool kid and that's uh, about a, a an average timeline for that i would say so first anime pokemon uh, favorite anime gintama or jintama i don't know which one's correct because i am uh, a plebeian but for what it means to you, we have a bit of a shorter response. But they said, I feel like anime represents human imagination better than anything else. You can find a new show that will take you into a completely foreign land that still feels authentically human or take something really mundane and present it to you and present it in a way that can really grab you. This is something I talk about um, a lot in the comments of Black Lagoon, where people mention the characters feeling very real. And that is, I love uh, when they take something it, like a completely foreign world and make it feel authentically human which black lagoon isn't completely foreign but it's this uh the shady underbelly world this world that isn't familiar to most of us and it feels the most human that many things have i feel like trigun is a good example of this as well it's the ruins of a human world but it's gun smoke it's still unfamiliar to us but it's one of the most human feeling animes of all time and again that comes back to the power of anime that all media has, uh, but anime has a very special grip on with its exaggeration, with its ability to do things that other formats can't do. And especially in that ridiculousness, like with Gurren Lagann or Kill a Kill, series that are completely over the top, uh, they sometimes flip back on themselves and become very uh, subtly human and deep in that way. And taking something mundane and presenting it in a way that can grab you again, um, very, very true with anime and the tools at its disposal of its format. 
our next response, we have one from Oni Senpai, <laughs> Senpai, sorry, um, who gave their age as eight as 19 so they've been watching anime for eight years first of dragon ball z and favorite as science gate one of my three 10 out of 10 so a great pick there for what it means to them they said i began watching anime as a substitute for tv shows and stuff that i thought were somewhat boring it was just a form of entertainment Watching battle scenes that would put me on the edge of my seat, powerful dialogues that would have my blood boiling, dark stuff that stirred my mind from the inside. Characters that I could relate to and cheer for. In the beginning, it was just that. But over the years, it evolved into something I can't just dismiss as entertainment. When I started watching thought-provoking animes, I started feeling a change inside of me. It made me realize that I wasn't putting any effort in understanding myself in my own world. The things I took for granted are a blessing bestowed upon me. Now it has become a way for me to reflect my own opinions and thoughts upon and force myself to think critically. Anime has allowed me to change myself for the better, better, and I'm very thankful to it. And again, this is something I very much relate to. Um, a big part of my story is not having much of that capacity for any sort of abstract, um, deeper thinking for so large of a percentage of my life. You know, I was scientifically inclined but that was very dry and procedural it was not appreciating the world around me but uh, trying to force a concrete understanding of the world around me and there's definitely something about those thought provoking thought provoking animes that i appreciate and think have made me a more interesting and just generally better person who can now reflect on themselves again i've said the name so many times psychopaths trigun bebop uh these anime that were deeper and made me go this relates to me in some way. How does it? Is that good? Is that bad? Does it have to be good or bad? And that's something I didn't have before anime. So again, I very much relate to this story and being thankful to it in that way. So another absolutely lovely story here. This video is already so long and I kind of love it. Um, I don't know, going through these stories is just interesting. And, uh, you know, one of the the best aspect of this is always interacting with people and seeing how they feel on things as well. And, um, it's, it's, I don't know, this is just fun and interesting. I, I like doing this as something I generally don't get to do. Our next one here, we have someone quite young, age 14, said they have been watching anime for one year. Their first anime was Cowboy Bebop, and their favorite is also Cowboy Bebop. Not many people. Um, that I've met stick with their first being their favorite. Uh, there's, a, there's usually, you know, an anime, that gateway anime that you start watching, uh, but you wouldn't consider it your favorite. Um, I guess only watching for a year, maybe that'll change. But with Cowboy Bebop, I feel like it won't. That one is, is definitely worthy of the top spot. <clears throat> so very valid there. Uh, what does it mean to you? They said, anime was something I thought I'll never get into. I thought of it being silly, no different to watching a kid's cartoon, until I noticed my brother watching an anime called Cowboy Bebop on Adult Swim. The name of the anime made me curious, so the best, nest, the best next option was to watch the show. Now at that time I was 13, so most of what that anime shows I couldn't really relate to, for I am still young and, well, dumb. But that show still hit me. It opened my eyes to the art of visuals and storytelling in anime. Then, of course, I proceeded to check out other anime such as Trigun, Samurai Champloo, Megalobox, I'm in the process of watching Season 2, Black Lagoon, Berserk, 1997, and Akira. Each one I enjoyed very much, and I'm looking forward to watch more Hidden Gems. Uh, this is definitely something um, I relate to it less because I started watching anime when I was about 16, so I was, I was a little bit older and... It's not much time, uh, but those few years of, specifically in America, high school, do kind of introduce you to a few more things you're not used to, depending on clubs and different things like that. Um, but there's definitely that, like, the idea of hidden gems, if you're talking about um, whether within anime or these anime that are hidden gems just in the greater world. Um, especially a lot of these names, Bebop, Trigun, Black Lagoon, Berserk, um, that very much are. And it's something special when you first find those. There's something about, especially um, them watching um, anime starting with Bebop, because it is you know one of um, the Adult Swim staples. Um, 
that is very different from what a lot of people experience as well. Again, my first one was, you know, fairy tale and soul eater and, and a lot of shows like that. Um, so there's a, there's, a, there's a certain maturity that anime has um, that you, that I very much started to appreciate as this feels like, um, at least in those darker series, it's not holding my hand, if that's a good way to put it. Um, so this one, you know, is a little bit different for me because I, I, didn't start watching it or you know understanding that I was watching it um, at that young of an age. Those are very um, good ones to start on, despite being a little more mature and, and as you say, maybe not um, relating to everything. Um, but it's it's an interesting one to see. You don't see many people, or at least I haven't talked to many people who have started on those more mature series. So interesting to see in a good story all around there. Getting into our next one, we have Flammy or Flamey. I'm not sure of the exact uh, correct pronunciation there, so um, pardon me being uh, ignorant to that fact. I hope um, it's not a deal breaker there. Um, they say they have been watching anime for one and a half years. Their first one was Seven Deadly Sins, and their favorite anime, they gave us a top three here, or three may not be in any order, Tokyo Ghoul, Attack on Titan, and Steins Gate. Steins Gate being represented again, a great pick, obviously, there. For what it means to them, they said, So my journey is really funny. About one and a half years ago, all of my friends started to watch anime, and I was always the guy who had a very big prejudice about the weave culture and... Yeah, after half a year of this, all my friends stopped watching it. Short time before this, I started to watch, and I'm going to use the English name here just so I don't butcher more Japanese in this video, The Seven Deadly Sins, and I was addicted immediately, and I binged all anime which I was interested in on Netflix, and after our holidays, and everyone stopped watching it, I was a full weeb now, and especially in the time of lockdown in my country, I binged animes over and over, and with every anime I watch, I am beginning to love this genre more. The thing in anime is that I can relate more and more with the characters than in a, li in a live action movie I don't care about the characters. But in anime I can build an emotional bridge better than the live action. And yeah, more than a year is over and I am the biggest weeb in my class. It's very funny and yeah, now anime is a part of my life. Without I wouldn't want to live and all of this is the reason why my nickname for my friend is the most kawaii death metal fan in between of East and West Front. <clears throat> L sigh congru i i love the the more time goes on in, in the um more i talk about it the more i'm just starting to get unabashedly like we be into steins gate uh, like those days where i just want to you know full on halloween kioma and that's a, that's for another day there um but yeah, the, it's it's funny that uh, from what I'm reading here, it's like they stopped watching it and you started watching it, <laughs> which is definitely more interesting. I feel like normally it's kind of like joining a cult anime is like one of us, one of us, and you get pulled into it. Um, but but there is definitely something, especially um in the time of lockdown, where anime maybe even is taking on a new meaning in escapism or deeper thought of we're stuck inside forever and. Um, we have this new, exaggerated, interesting, uh, different story you can't see in other places to just go ahead and binge, which I feel like for a lot of people has definitely been a big help. Uh, so obviously something to definitely appreciate about anime there. And there is something to be said about uh, connecting to it more than live action. For me, that's something I do as well. Um, you know, I'm not sure what it comes down to for myself personally, whether it's, you know, always... Um, <clears throat> not feeling like I conform to the standards of what I've always supposed to be, whether that's in terms of where I come from or gender or anything like that, um, where I definitely relate more to anime, where those things tend to fall to the wayside a little bit more, where a lot of the stories are about breaking those sort of concepts or where they just don't exist in general, especially if you get into maybe some different fantasies or something like that. Uh, so there definitely is some some validity and something to be said about relating to those characters more as again i do um for better or worse makashima for better or worse okabe for better or worse vash and wolfwood uh there's a lot of characters when they that specific exaggeration anime has that can portray these very human things uh so poignantly i definitely understand relating to them over um live action there almost halfway through and only 30 minutes i'm loving this 
Um, our next response is from Florian. I hope I said that one right as well. At age of 20, once again, there's a, a bit of a median here. And how long have you been watching anime? They said 12 years or more. However, I realized later on that I was watching anime a, a little bit more in line with um, the traditional anime pathway there. First anime, Dragon Ball or Naruto. Favorite anime, Gintama slash Jintama. It happened twice. I really wish I knew how to say it. I'm sorry. I am sorry. Uh, what does it mean to you? They said, anime was a way that led me into discovering new things about different cultures that were not known to me. It helped me to bond with a few people over our shared interest and provided me many different topics that I could brought up in conversations. It also reinflamed my passion of history knowledge with certain topics after I watched a certain anime that contained some historical aspects. For example, Fueled Fate Zero... Fate Zero fueled my interest about Gilgamesh, which led to the point where I read the entire epic of Gilgamesh. This is something I obviously very much relate to with anime, um, where it's not inherent to anime, but it's very good at, even just in the background, uh, basing itself off mythological or historical or any number of things. And not overtly saying it in any way, but piquing your interest to look into it deeper. Again, I relate to it very much if you've seen the more recent Black Lagoon videos on Roberta or on Balalaika. I love to get into the history of these characters, the real world events uh, that shaped the course of history and inspired someone and these characters' motivations in a very real way. And that's something I very much appreciate about anime and the anime I watch, that there's that uh, fueling of historical knowledge in anime. Uh, again, like uh, the other types of knowledge we've discussed, like philosophical and, and uh, thematic. Uh, but specifically the history, again, I relate to if you've seen those more recent videos and more that we'll have coming in the future as well. And uh, that uh, going along with that learning about different cultures, I didn't know anything about Colombia before I researched it for um, Roberta. I didn't know much about the Soviet Union before I researched it for Balalaika, except for a little bit about East Germany because I had watched the series Deutschland 83, which is a good recommendation for something live action uh, if you're looking for something uh, good to watch on Hulu still, I believe. That's something if I would ever talk about stuff outside of anime, I would immediately discuss that first. Um... But yeah, so that historical passion is definitely something I relate to and appreciate in this lovely story here. Uh, so anyway, moving on once more to our um, response from, uh, again, I'm so sorry I'm going to butcher so many of these names. Uh, if I wasn't doing this you know, very um, live and on the spot um, and had a little bit more info, I would definitely go into... Um, saying these names properly um but just the, the way i'm formatting this i don't uh exactly have that capacity so i'm going to have to guess with my terrible uh, american pronunciation of uh vignac that that's um how i'll try to say it there but i apologize if i have uh, mispronounced any of your um names or designations throughout this video they gave their age as 26, didn't say how long they've been watching anime, but said their first was One Piece as a child and Soul Eater after knowing what anime is, as we've seen in many of the responses. And they said their favorite was Black Lagoon, another good shout there. And they said that I started watching anime as a child. Well, I wasn't really aware why it's something different to all the other stuff you watch on TV, but I kind of grew out of it, maybe because I thought it's not as cool as live action stuff. However, after many years of not watching anime, I came back to it because I grew tired of the ever-repetitive Hollywood series slash movies, and man, I really did not imagine or remember how versatile and sometimes deep this medium could be. For some reason, I feel way more for anime characters than I ever felt for any role in live action. There are so many characters I am rooting for and characters I can empathize with. I'm not really good with words to express myself or even understand myself in the first place, but seeing it portrayed right in front of me for a fictional character, I feel understood. As an introvert, pessimistic, and depressed person myself, I see some of these stories where I start to understand why I might feel down at some times, but it's also cheering me up at many other occasions. Anime helps me to a very small extent to cope with some things and offers me a small amount of relief from all of the shitty stuff happening in the real world. For me personally and globally. Again, that last line is something uh, we touched on a little bit before. And again, um, 
something I very much relate to as my motivation for what I'm doing and why I watch anime uh, in many respects as well. I very much relate to this one with the, uh, it may not show much in videos, but the introvert, pessimistic, depressed person. I relate to that um, probably much more than has ever shown through in videos, except uh, maybe uh, with Evangelion and Wonder Egg priority discussions. Um, but th there is something about that too with, again, it doesn't show in videos, but I'm terrible at expressing myself, um, but that I understand about this, even if, I, again, I'm terrible with words, so I can't put it into words on the spot. Um, but the idea of um, not being able to express yourself or understand yourself in the first place, but seeing it and um, feeling valid and understood in a piece of media, again, uh, like we've touched on, uh, for many of us, anime has given us the first characters where we feel understood or that we feel we can truly relate to. Um, so there's something very valid about that as well as, you know, for the first time being able to say, I don't understand specifically myself or why, but I'm starting to understand that I relate to this character. And from there, maybe growing into a deeper understanding, or if not, it doesn't even matter, just being able to feel valid uh, be able to cope and get that small amount of relief is something uh, very valuable again and something for a lot of us that is very specific to anime. So overall, another amazing story uh, that I'm very happy we get to share here today. Moving on to our next one, we have one from Chrono, age 31, say so they have been watching anime for 20 years. So we have the veteran here. First anime was Outlaw Star and the favorite of Cowboy Bebop or Attack on Titan. So another another one for Bebop there. For what does it mean to you? They said, anime is an amazing form of storytelling to me and escapism. When I was younger, I found myself constantly drawn to sci-fi or fantasy environments when I was younger and after my dad got me into Star Wars, I had a hunger for that whole space fantasy environment. Traveling across the stars, having adventures, etc. One Sunday morning, I stumbled across a discovery that would change my life forever. You see, the sci-fi channel used to show anime on Sunday mornings, and back then, it was kind of all over the place what you would get, i.e. Ghost in the Shell being showed on cable TV, which led me to stumble on Outlaw Star, Star followed by Bebop and Trigon. The rest is, as they say, history. And that's another thing um, that's very, um, not distinct or valid, but very... Um, true to anime as well which is it covers it's often described as a genre but then anime within it has very many genres so it's it's really more of a, a medium or, or art form than anything else is it covers so much and again so does you know traditional media or live action things but anime is able to do it equally across the board it doesn't need an expensive set or a bunch of heavy duty editing to make a sci-fi series where, say, a live-action series might. And that's something very special about it, is that it's able to cover all of the bases a lot more broadly than many things do. And so it has a lot of series like this, like uh, I can't say for Outlaw Star personally, but Bebop and Trigun, that fill this sci-fi genre in a very distinct and interesting and unique way without ever feeling not immersed in that specific genre. So even just on a more uh, genre-based level like that, anime is something very special. And so seeing a story that focuses on that is something I very much appreciate. So uh, a great submission we have there that explored some new things in this video. Our next one is from Lol Lol, who gave their age as seven years younger than Tsunamori. So I'll leave that up to you to figure out. For how long you've been watching anime, they say, if Doraemon, Do Doraemon, if Doraemon and Crayon Shinchan counts as long as I can remember, what was your... Oh yeah, okay, so that does it, yeah. What was your first anime? The first anime I watched besides Sh Sugo Chara was, I think, Assassination Classroom. I believe that's what Ass Class stands for. Or Owari no Seraph. It was 2015. What's your favorite anime? Psychopaths or Uro Butchers? <laughs> I, I haven't heard that. I don't know if that's an endearing nickname for it, but I have not uh, heard that one yet. Of uh, Poly Monica... Poly Magi Madica Magica. That's the full name for P M M M or Fate Zero. For what it means to you, we have a nice long one here. 
is that as a person living literally next to Japan, their animations are one of the main sources of entertainment. Shinchan was the SpongeBob of my childhood, and our dubbing for the long running shows like Detective Conan and One Piece was actually not all bad. It didn't feel foreign. And in 2015, I was bored of the TV channels that aired the same episodes every day, so I decided to look them up. I was only able to watch one episode sneak peeks, and the first episode of Seraph the End was shocking. I didn't understand the plot at all, but children treated as livestock by vampires was a shock to my eight year old mind. And then came Assassination Classroom. The concept of students trying to kill the teacher was also a significant shock. Next day, I talked about it to my friends at school, and my homeroom teacher didn't like the part where students tried to kill the teacher. She scolded me to the point I started crying and told me never to watch it again. It was like a forbidden fruit. Despite what the teacher said, I looked for stuff and started watching less violent shows like Sugo Chara and the later first six or seven seasons of One Piece. And for... Around two years, it stopped there because I had to study abroad where I encountered Western cartoons like Steven Universe. When I came back, I heard the cool kids talking about Naruto and two geeks in the corner talking about Tokyo Ghoul. Guess who I decided to get along with? Vampires were pretty shocking, and what now? A show about cannibalism? I was interested, but I didn't watch it because I had other things to do like play Roblox or something. And then I moved. New school, no friends, social skills, no more. I decided to check out the things the geeks used to talk about. And then came the anime community. I got introduced to Reddit and saw thousands of people making jokes about anime, and I wanted to be a part of it, understand the jokes they make, and even make my own. Found out what the numbers meant a few months in. The ending of Madoka Magica left me in a state of, what was that? For days, Psychopaths redefined what moving pictures could do to me. It has since, became a part, since become a part of my life. And obviously, I relate to that final line there. I, I have, again, um, those are two of my top five series of all time. And, and as I've said many times, Psychopaths is just a part of my life at this point. Uh, so I very much relate to that part there. Uh, it's a very interesting story, too. And one thing, uh, one of the things I wish I had actually included in this that I completely forgot to and one of the things i appreciate the most about our community is they said here as a person living literally next to japan um so for me i'm an american a lot of you know i'm i'm dead in 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 the middle of the land that witnesses hollywood and the the fast and furious style america porn movies um and so getting to see different perspectives is something that has very much um become more prevalent for me the more I have engaged with this community. Uh, we have people from all over. I've talked to people from Russia to India to um, even just a few states away or so many different um, places that I never got to do before. And that's one of the great things about an online community based about such a broad thing. You can meet people from anywhere interested in something just like you. And that leads to a lot of different and cool experiences and that's uh, not specifically part of their story although they did mention studying abroad but something i appreciate about it is that there's that specificity of being able to interact with someone who has that different viewpoint and can take this media we love and provide their context of it through that viewpoint this is something i wish i had included here uh, that i very much love um, was specified in this story uh the <laughs> The fact of talking about assassination classroom in school and the teacher scolding them, although leading to crying, is obviously an interesting detail. And um, I get a little bit of that forbidden fruit thing with that. You know, it's it becoming more mainstream, but had a little bit of that taboo, like you're a nerd geek. And obviously that's a little bit different than, you know, uh, being made to cry for watching it, but a little bit of the same feel there. Yeah, it's, it's definitely interesting that, and again, coming back to that final line of what was that and just the first piece of media you see that kind of makes you just sit back for a second and, and think about and appreciate what you've just watched. Um, so, so one, one of our very interesting stories here today, uh, a good, good submission there. Moving on, we have one from Gavin Sinto who said they were age 22, have been watching anime for 16 years, started with Dragon Ball Z and their favorite is rising shield hair hero. Almost said hero. That's not correct. Their story is, I believe, our shortest for today. Say, anime, anime motivated me to become a successful manga writer with 89,000 fans and 46 stories soon to adapt to manga to anime then RPG. I, I write to entertain fans, 
like me and feel achieved. So a shorter story here, so I don't have um, exactly as much to say, uh, but there is something to be appreciated about it as an inspiration too, to say, this is something that I would like to create and share with other people and um, not quite grow your own community around, but expand a community, become part of it, become a driving factor of it. Uh, so again, something to be appreciated there is it as a source of inspiration and something that continues itself um, in that way as well. So a short one, but one we can also uh, cover with uh, just as much meaning as the others. Next, we have one from Jimmy Neutron. <sighs> this this is um this is pretty big. Uh, we have a celebrity on for this one. <laughs> I didn't know Mr. Neutron was a fan of the channel. Uh, they gave their age as 27. For how long you've been watching anime, technically 12 years if you consider only Naruto watching anime, but approximately 5-ish years as an avid watcher, again in, in line with most of our anime paths. Uh, first as Naruto and favorite as Psychopaths, the correct answer! Yes, we need, we need more Psychopaths listed as the favorite, the greatest piece of media of all time. But moving on back to them, and what it means to them. Anime embodies everything I love about television. It plays with concepts that I don't find anywhere else from modern television. The art style is also adorable in my opinion. It has the playfulness of a cartoon but the seriousness of an adult series. It has been a guilty pleasure of mine due to my IRL friends having absolutely no interest in anime and would give me a lot of shit if they knew how much I love it. Anime to me is an introduction to worlds I never thought possible, stories and characters that give me much feels and an escape from reality. Again, all um, good stuff in this one as well. A, a great form of escapism in that exaggeration. Stories and characters can give you the feels, again, because it has such a capacity to take those things to their limits. Uh, anime is one of the best things for hype or, you know, for lack of a better term, feels, you know, in, in the internet lingo. Um, it's very good at that because it can exaggerate things, again, in a way you just don't see in other places introduction to new worlds that equalization across the board of genres um playfulness while also having seriousness again something all these things that are very unique to anime called out here uh, and again specifically saying that's everything they love about television as well so not loving it as something different but as one of the purest and kind of best extensions of what they love so again um a little bit shorter a guy um I don't want to talk more or less on any of these to say that some are more or less valid. It's just obviously um, the way they've came in and uh, having covered things before, I don't want to repeat myself too much. Um, lost my train of thought a little bit there. Sorry about that. Um, but there's a lot in this one I like. Um, that's a, a little bit more unique to this one, specifically calling out as I don't want to speak for them and say the pinnacle of television, but very much that like for what they enjoy um, the pinnacle of the art form of television. So getting closer to the end here, we are on 14 of 17. Uh, this one is from Dirtbound. Yes, okay, I thought I might have added the T there. Dirtbound, age 16, watching for little over a year. First anime as Boku Dake ga Inemachi. Hope, again, I pronounce it right. Favorite Steinsgate. Another one of the uh, Prof 10 out of 10 that I love to see listed as the favorite there. For what it means to you, they said, My first conscious encounter with anything otaku related was watching a Let's Play of Phoenix Wright in early 2015. Before that, I always had a small distaste for anime. As I fought it, it was unnecessary, weird, and cringe, but after I finished watching that Let's Play, I was absolutely moved by the power of story storytelling I had never experienced before. So I thought that maybe other otaku stuff can do the same trick, so I started watching more visual novel IPs. Go ahead in time and it's February 28th, 2020, and me and my family have already moved to a rural part of Poland where my parents are from. One week I catch a cold and is sitting at home alone, so I decide to check out Netflix for the first time to see if I can kill my boredom. As I scroll, I start seeing anime pop up and I am fascinated by the description of Erased, and then everything snowballed. Now my favorite anime is Steins Gate, and after having watched it, I find it hard to enjoy other sci-fi related content. All in all, I still love anime and will probably continue to. This is uh this one calls out specifically I don't want to say one of the downfalls of anime but the, the the downfalls of finding something you love so much where it's um saying that find it hard to enjoy other sci-fi related content there's definitely a lot of things like when if I watch something else that takes these 
um, cyberpunk identity aspect that psychopaths incorporated and see them um, sitting there like it's not quite as good there's something about finding an anime you love that sometimes ruins other media for you which which isn't a positive but kind of shows the power and the um, meaningfulness of it there uh, again our second story that specified uh, a different location um, saying they came from Poland which is another one I can add to the list of uh, someone I have although not directly interacted with which is again something amazing uh, about this whole community in general too um and one thing that specifically there is they said a rural part of poland which you know we could assume would be um a little less populated and there's something about it too there where with less people you're just going to see less viewpoints you're going to have less to interact with and having something uh, that is very broad that is very engaging um it covers a lot of different things and can give you those different viewpoints, historical aspects and things. Uh, again, something anime is all very good at incorporating with um, animation in general is also something powerful to have um, in an area where you might not get more exposure. Not not to be, you know, saying one area is better than the other, just that um, I definitely know people who have come from more rural areas who enjoy anime because it's it's very much something they don't get to see much. And they didn't say here they came from a rural area that their family did, um, but something I, I wanted to mention uh, in conjunction with this story as well. It's also interesting seeing it brought from the let's play of a game, which is inspired by uh, you know visual novel. Um, or at least inspired or led to you know visual novels anime or is in the same style as um anime in some way which is one we haven't um seen people get into from so uh, something very interesting in this story as well overall like i say this for some of them but they're all they've all been very great submissions uh, i've loved going through all of them so far but 15 out of 17 only three left uh this one is an anonymous submission with no age but they said they have been watching anime for two years first was psychopaths and favorite attack on titan I feel like those should be swapped. I think we should get a little swap going on there. Psychopaths is the favorite, greatest media of all time. But I'll 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 digress. I'll digress. So a little bit of a shorter one here. They said, "I think anime to me is like an addiction now. At the start, I chose such anime that made my first stepping stone into the world of anime. I think anime is like a staple to my life. I can't think of a day in the past two years when I haven't watched anime." Most anime to me are like lessons of self-love, hard work. I think of anime as a friend who never leaves me. Uh, and that's something very um, involved with content in general too. I know there's this weird like, especially watching anime content on YouTube, someone like me talking about anime, there, there's a weird um, relationship that comes to it. Uh, and especially with those series in general, it's um, anime being like a friend. I, I relate to that because there's something like when I turn on Psychopaths to go through it again to make another video or just to enjoy it, it's like it's like wrapping a warm blanket around me. It's like someone came over and hugged me and said, everything's okay for a little bit. For the next, however, like 12 hours, if you just watch the series all at once, you're not going to think about anything else. You're going to be enjoying yourself. You're going to love it. Everything will be okay for a second. Anime definitely becomes like a friend for that. Those favorite series you get, they're like a warm comfort blanket. And that's something so beautiful. Again, prevalent in everything, but so to such a great degree in anime. Uh, again, it's I relate to it being a staple of life. It very much is for me, as you can probably tell. Um, so I, I, maybe on the addiction level, I, I maybe relate a little bit more to this one as well. But anime is definitely, there's some that are just like a, a nice bear hug and i love that about it uh, our next one is from smiley face age 26 watching anime for 15 years so first is full metal alchemist 2006 so you saw that when it came out um which is something i wish i could have done i wish i could have experienced um obviously it was it had a manga beforehand so it's not like you're experiencing it uh before other people but in its anime form just seeing it as it came out definitely would have been interesting so i'm a little bit jealous there and for their favorite anime, they said Fully Cooly Season 1. For what it means to you, a bit of a medium-length one here, which I'm going to take a sip of water beforehand. I, I'm glad I don't have to record tomorrow because I've been speaking for an hour. It's very much worth it, though. They said, anime for me has always been a bridge for me to connect to other people. Before the first time ever seeing anime, 
my best friend moved away. This caused me to break away from my friend group, leading to a very lonely summer vacation. Then one random Saturday night, FMA come on, came on, and it was so completely different than any other cartoon that I had seen to that point. Then I had to ask my brother what this is for him just to say that it's an anime, dumbass. Once school started up, I just had to talk to people about all the different anime that I had seen, and combined with starting middle school at the time, this led me to making new friends. I believe we've touched on this a little bit in this video. It's been an hour under hot lights, so maybe I'm losing my mind a little bit here and forgetting things. Uh, but it definitely, as a um, specific community, has a lot of power in making friends. Uh, I specifically made friends in college through an um, anime club that I was the treasurer of, which I, I may have mentioned here. I may have just been talking about it earlier. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely that very much of, like, especially when you find it hard to interact with people. Um, like, I don't know if you find it hard to interact with people, but... Um, seeing here saying that your best friend moved away and, and kind of losing your friends in that way and having to make new ones, there's something about a shared common interest, specifically in the anime community, where most of us um, are a little bit introverted and then break out of that when we, you know, the safety has been taken down and we know that you're a weeb too. Um, that's basically what I'm getting at here is anime is that bridge, like, like that they specifically said bridge here of, okay, I'm, I'm going to interact with this person I have this common interest, something I love that they have too, where even if we don't watch the same ones, we know what it's like. This specific um, medium of animation, of media, uh, that we can connect through. And that's something anime is very powerful with and something that we, um, I definitely very much appreciate it and appreciate about your story with it as well here. And moving on to our last one. I'm, I'm sad. I, I wish I could just keep doing this until 5 a.m. This has been very fun and engaging and I love um, being able to, to, even if it's only one way, interact with you and, and hear your stories and everything. So, our last one is from Tony Nightmare, age 27, watching anime for 20 plus years, another seasoned vet in the club here today. Uh, first anime as Pokemon, and their favorite anime as Mongolian Chop Squad. That is one I have never heard of until now. Um, until now uh so interesting there i'm gonna have to see what that is just out of pure name curiosity so ending on a bit of a shorter one here but they say anime quite honestly is a form of escapism in most cases other times they keep me daydreaming making a parallel with my life and the main characters some anime show me that it's not all sunshine and roses that the good guy doesn't always win and if they do it's not without i'm if they do it's not i'm gonna believe that's without consequences I love the idea that anime above most me media IMO these days carry more weight and meaning. With that last sentence, I will assume that that was uh, like talking about how anime shows us consequences much more. Uh, again, very much with series you will see on the wall there. Um, I should like, you know what, let's, let's fuck it. We'll do it live, right? This is going to sound terrible, but okay, we finally got that centered back up after that terrible idea of screw it, we'll do it live. Um, but yeah, I was pointing to the ball specifically because of, you know, the series like Madoka Magica, like Cowboy Bebop, like, um, Trigon, uh, specifically Trigon that focus on the consequences of heroic actions. And that's something I have found so much more in anime than other things. If you look at most popular movies, I don't, I'm going to call it James Bond specifically where the villain gives them option A, option B, neither is good. And they third option, they find something through the middle that solves both of them. Now, anime is just as guilty of this. Many shonen will third option their way out of everything. Um, but I have found so many anime that don't do that, that are willing to not, that are willing to make you unhappy. And again, that's something that um, I have found very much in, I'm still way too far over this way. There we go. Uh, that is something I have found um, very much an anime that is not all sunshine and roses. The good guy doesn't always win. And that's something I appreciate so much in media. I mean, Psychopaths' ending is this cyclical monster if you ignore season two. Um, so again, I very much relate to and appreciate and understand that, that idea of a media that is not afraid to show you consequences and main characters not winning and uh, accept that it's not going to make it happy, but you can still find joy and escapism in it in that way. It might seem odd to some people, but sometimes depressing series are also escapism. Maybe not as a, it could be worse, but just in looking to a different world and thinking about it, kind of gets your mind off things. And it can work as escapism in that way as well. 
So um, any of this, the submissions would have been a great one to end on. I, I, I hate to even end on one because it feels like it's, it's putting it in a higher position. And I, I don't want any of them to be in a higher position. They are all equally valid and amazing, no matter how short or long they were. Um, this was something so interesting to do. And um, it's scary in a way. It, it, it was it was scary to think I'm going to have to look through these and pick a few of them and go over them. And then I decided, fuck it, just do all of them. And this is an hour long mess of a video and probably not many people are going to watch it, but that's fine. Um, there's something about this. Uh, um, it's very much been ignited. I'm doing this uh, at a point where I've had more confidence than I have in the past years combined in this moment. And that's why I decided to do it right now. Uh, where I can say these things and, and not be afraid to make a connection. Um, and although um, I feel at times I come off as, as kind of dry and procedural in the videos and, and maybe even monotone, and that's something I, I want to get out of a bit. And this was a good exercise in that and also drawing that connection again, even though this is a one way perception. Um, I love that we're able to see similarities and differences in our stories and appreciate those and come together around a shared common interest that is very beautiful, very unique and unique to all of us and um, relatable to all of us in many ways through our stories, through the series we've watched, through the series we haven't watched. Um, I don't mean to talk in circles. I, I don't want to just cover everything I've already said in this video, but I'm glad I did this. Um, you know, it seems like a low ratio of times to have 11,000 subscribers and only get 17 responses, even though I suck at self-promotion. And that's another problem with this that I'm trying to get over. Ah, um, but this was so fun. I really enjoyed this of, of sharing your stories and getting to, to put something new out there and something specific to people and, and show and share an appreciation and a love for anime. Um, and I should stop making this about myself at the end here because this, again, I, I want this to very much be about you all and just a little bit of my relation to it as well. So I think I'm going to end this one here. Um, in an effort to be better about self-promotion, <laughs> I hate to do it in this video, but I need to get into the habit of putting myself out there and trying to, to grow myself so I can keep making this content for you all. I'll have my link to my uh, Twitter in the description below if you want to tweet me directly, um, get some random thoughts and updates. My Discord, if you want to um, interact with people to, to you know express these feelings that we've gone over today or anything like that of the sort, even just talk about anime chat, talk about whatever. Um, I'll have the link uh, down there as well. A link to my Patreon if you would like to support the channel moving forward and get your um, name at the end of videos. And once we reach enough Patreon subscribers, uh, get some uh, dedicated events uh, for them as well. Uh, so if you want to support us directly, you can go ahead and do it there. And I say us not because anyone else is doing the work with me, but because to me, it's us. It's you and me because with just me, it's nothing. Um, I, I turned my promotional section into more gushing about how great you all are um so anyway i'll just leave it there and say thank you for watching especially this one and sharing in these wonderful stories with me and with us um thank you for watching and i hope i will see you again uh soon